The Enigma machine was used by the Nazis to encrypt messages during World War II. There have been television shows and movies made about the Allies' efforts to solve the Enigma's codes. Peter Berg of Brock University joins us. He has organized a fascinating upcoming event that looks at the history of the Enigma machine. And Peter, I understand these machines were available as early as 1918. Yeah, the machine was invented in 1918. It was a commercial enterprise as a private company out of Berlin. Um, but it was spurred by the lack of secure communication during World War I. And uh, the inventor, Arthur Scherbius, thought, well, I'm going to invent a machine that can be used not just for military communication, but also just, say, for banking, for instance. Back then, some companies had a need for secure communication. And the German military adopted the machine before Hitler took power, already in the 1920s, as their device to, uh, for secure communication. I mentioned you know, that there's been movies and television shows. It was a movie that inspired your interest in this. It was. I think lots of us have seen it, The Imitation Game. And uh, having seen the movie and knowing that at the time, the, the place I worked at, my department owned an Enigma machine, I got pretty excited. And so then, naturally, I, I sort of started to give talks, taking the machine around the country. It was in Norway. And I started to give talks about the machine, somewhat as a layperson. It was not my expertise, but I immersed myself in the material, and uh, it's a fascinating story. You're a mathematics professor, and this machine basically used mathematics to encrypt information. Right. It was a really big leap, uh, this invention of the machine, in a sense that it allowed you um, to encrypt messages at a, at a level, meaning with a security that was unrivaled before, literally in the history of mankind. It was a complete step up, and that, that fascinated me. And obviously, it tricked the Germans into believing that, that's a, that their communication would be safe, which it wasn't. And there was so much of an effort by Bletchley Park in London, in England, to try and crack this code, and they were successful. Yeah, they were successful. And the movie focuses on that. And I think lots of our attention has been drawn to Bletchley Park and Alan Turing and his team to crack the code. But what's often forgotten, not being talked about, is that Bletchley Park needed to know things about the machine in the first place. And it was the British Navy on many occasions that was able to successfully capture Enigma machines from the German Navy, uh, material, code sheets, and each time successfully meaning that the high command in Germany was led to believe that the material got lost instead. But it actually ended up at Bletchley Park. And without which Alan Turing could have not, and his team could have not broken the code. You're getting back up on the stage January 26 at the Recital Hall, but you also have three special guests. These are all experts on the Enigma machine, on encryption in general? That's right. So three guests, one of, them, one of whom is uh, David O'Keefe, best-selling author, historian, works at, uh, works at uh, Marinopolis College in Montreal. He wrote a fascinating book uh, called One Day in August about what the, the Battle of Dieppe was really all about. And the Battle of Dieppe was the worst day for Canadian forces in World War II in terms of casualties. And uh, David uncovered that it was all about catching or securing the latest four-order machine of, of, of the Nazis. And until that point, and it was unsuccessful, but, but basically Bletchley Park suffered what's called a blackout. They were no longer able to crack that new four-order machine. And that whole operation was led by overseen by Ian Fleming, the author of James Bond. James and, Bond uh, uh, movies, it, books, yeah. Absolutely, and that's why this book uh, is, is fascinating to read. We have also Richard Brisson, uh, Canadian, right? He uh, studied mathematics and then entered the intelligence community and worked many years in the intelligence community for, for Canada, for this country. And uh, there's probably hardly anyone who knows more about this than he does. And he actually owns some of these machines. Yeah, he will bring a number of machines to the event. And uh, typically, will, he, it's not the first time I work with him, typically also brings um, some parts from Bletchley Park, like from Tourist Bombi, it's called, from the actual sort of computer that was built right. to break the code. A couple of those wheels they call. This is fascinating to see it in front of you. You almost never have the opportunity to see these things so close up, right? They're usually behind glass and so on and so forth. And Richard presents them and explains them. And then we have Thomas Jennewein. He's a, he's a professor um, at the University of Waterloo. Um, I haven't met him yet, <laughs> but I've heard about him. And Thomas came to Canada a few years ago from Vienna. And Vienna is one of the leading, there's a group in Vienna, it's one of the leading groups in the world for quantum communication and quantum information science. So this sounds pretty fancy now. And so Thomas is leading the charge for Canada to launch a satellite in 2025, if things go well, to, to um, 
to facilitate secure communication via satellite using quantum technology. It's called quantum, uh, uh, quantum encryption. So we go from the levers of this machine that's on display mm -hmm. behind us to the satellite out in space. Yeah, that's right. It's, it's quite an evening, I think, and uh, uh, I, don't, I wouldn't miss it if I was a member of the public. Tickets are how much? Uh, pay as you can. So we're very generous, meaning uh, we start at zero dollars. You can attend the event by just securing a ticket online, but we encourage people to pay twenty dollars. I think that's fair. But you do recommend that people do have to book their tickets ahead of time yeah. through the first Ontario Performing Arts Center. You certainly need a ticket, otherwise you can't enter, and it's selling out pretty fast. This sounds like a fascinating evening. I, I'm hoping that there's still some tickets left so I can attend as well. January twenty-sixth. That's right. Thanks very much for joining us, Dr. Burke. Thanks for having me. Thank you.